This is the Hohem MT2, and I think it is probably the best beginner gimbal that I have ever tested. And for people looking for their very first gimbal, this might be my number one recommendation. And this is all facilitated by the fact that this gimbal has an AI tracking feature. So just like all the new fancy cameras that can track all these different objects, this gimbal itself, without even a camera on it, can track a person in a scene. It can actually track that person independent of other people in the scene. And it's not just facial recognition or body recognition. It actually recognizes the specific person that you want to track in a scene and will ignore the other people in the scene. And that's all made possible by this tiny little box. Now, this is their artificial intelligence tracking box and it has a little sensor or camera on the front of it, which allows it to track the person that you want to track in any given scene. I'd like to thank Hohem for sending this gimbal out and sponsoring this video, but as always, all opinions are my own, and Hohem had no say in the making of the video. And if I look at the gimbal as it's sitting there now, this is just a normal, well-built, nice, standard gimbal. But as soon as you put this little box on, this absolutely changes everything, and I think it makes this gimbal my number one recommendation for beginning gimbal operators. The first thing I wanna do is just go over the basics of the gimbal and how it works as a standard gimbal. I'm going to move through this pretty quickly because I really wanna to get to the AI feature and focus on that because I think that's where this gimbal really sets itself apart from other gimbals on the market right now. The gimbal itself is a lightweight travel gimbal. It's similar in size to the Crane M3S. This one might be a little bit bigger than that. It's built out of high quality metal and plastic. It feels nice in the hand. It feels reasonably premium and at least above its price point that I would say. It has an easy to read monochrome LCD screen and it's got some pretty good ergonomics as far as your hands on the grip and all the buttons and dials you need to operate the gimbal. But these are all pretty much standard controls you find on most gimbals now. You have the ability to control the camera via the gimbal if your camera is on the compatibility list. You also have the ability to charge the camera via the gimbal. The gimbal itself has about a 17 hour battery life. You can control the gimbal via a Bluetooth app, which works quite well. The gimbal also has a unique motion control feature, which has an A and B button on the side of the gimbal. So you just move the gimbal to the point A that you want to start your sort of time lapse at, and then you move it to point B and you set point B and then it will slowly go from point A to point B. So you can do a time lapse of clouds going by or stars, what have you, and have a bit of motion in that shot as well. It has the easy ability to switch from landscape mode to portrait orientation for TikTok and vertical video. I found it easy to balance. It's got an auto configure function. So you just put the camera on, you click auto configure and it sets everything for you. It also has a light inside the AI tracking box, which allows you to use it as a fill light in a variety of different white color temperatures, as well as the RGB spectrum. So you can have a color accent to whatever shot you're doing. Using the gimbal as a basic gimbal, you've got all your standard gimbal modes. You've got pan follow, you've got pan tilt follow, you've got lock and you've got point of view mode. These all work as I would expect them to and as other gimbals that I have used. The performance is acceptable without being mind blowing. If you do a good ninja walk, you can get absolutely perfect performance. But if you are heavy footed, you will get some micro jitters in the footage. But if your camera has any sort of IBIS or digital IS, or if you're using a lens with image stabilization, it does remove those jitters. So I think as a standard gimbal, the performance is acceptable, but it's nothing mind blowing. But if those are the only features this gimbal had, I wouldn't be making this video because the key to this gimbal is this AI tracking feature which really makes this gimbal so easy to use and so extremely powerful, even in situations where I wouldn't even normally think about using a gimbal. And just to explain how this works, you've got this little removable box that sticks on via magnets to the front of the gimbal and you've got an on off switch. You click that into the on mode and a red light will come on. That lets you know that the gimbal is ready to track the subject. You do the okay symbol and whatever person in the scene does an okay symbol, the gimbal will start tracking that person. If that person wants the gimbal to stop tracking them, they just put their hand up and do the stop sign. If you have the gimbal tracking somebody and you're operating the gimbal and you want it to stop tracking that person, you just double tap the M. You also have the ability to reframe your shot by doing a double L sign like this, like a frame sign. And when you do that, the light on the front of the gimbal will start flashing red. You move to the part of the frame that you want to be in and you want it to lock you in, you do the frame symbol again and then it will hold you in that orientation. So if you want to be on the left side of frame with some space on your right, and the whole time you do the L symbol, move to the left side of the frame and you do the L symbol again and it will lock you in that position. 
So that's how it works. But what is it good for? Well, the first thing that I see it useful for is for individual content creators that want to add a little bit of extra production value to their videos, even if you're sitting at a desk like this and a locked off shop. Just setting this up, it will track you so closely that when you move, the camera angle will move just slightly and add a handheld movement element to the shot and make it a bit more interesting. This is something that people often try to do in editing, which doesn't look very natural. It's also something that the new Sony cameras have an ability to track a person and do this. But that doesn't look natural either because what happens is, in real life, when a camera is moving back and forth following a person, the person stays sharp and detailed and focused without much motion blur, and then the background is seeing the motion blur because the camera is moving. When the Sony cameras do their artificial tracking, you get the opposite of that. The person on their face gets blurry because of the motion blur, but the background stays solid and it just it doesn't really work as well as you might like. Where this is actually moving as if somebody was handheld moving it. And you'll even see in movies and interviews, they often will have a person, even though it's a locked off shot or it's a static position for people, somebody doing an interview, they will have somebody doing intentional small hand movements to add interest to this shot. So this essentially eliminates that camera operator and adds a small amount of interest to even a locked off static shot. The next place I see it useful for is when you have a big scene, say you're shooting a cooking video or you're doing an exercise video or you're demonstrating something where you need to move around the room. If you don't have a camera operator, traditionally what you would have to do is just have a very, very wide camera angle and then you are a very small part of the scene. That often doesn't allow your facial expressions and you're looking into the camera to connect with the viewer as much as you might like. But there's really no other option if you're trying to cover a large scene and show a number of different things or demonstrate something and you don't have a camera operator. All you have to do is put this on a tripod and it will follow you throughout the scene. And it does it so effectively that it is almost unbelievable how effectively it does it. And just the fact that it, when I used it, it has no idea what the camera is seeing. It's just seeing with its own eye and moving around to try to keep you in the frame. And in just about every case, it did that absolutely perfectly for me. And I just couldn't even lose it if I tried. I was so surprised at how well this worked. So I think there's a variety of different content creation situations where this will work well for, particularly teaching and instructing and situations where you are going to be moving, but you want a little bit tighter shot. And I would suggest you might even use this as a tight shot. And if you've got a second camera angle, you'll have a wide shot. So you can cut between two different angles. But once again, you don't need a cameraman. The gimbal is doing all this for you. Now, the third situation that I did not realize how incredibly useful this would be for, I knew it could do this, but I just didn't think about how meaningful it was. If you were using it like a traditional gimbal, maybe you're doing a following shot or somebody's walking around holding the gimbal, but you're also walking around demonstrating, maybe you're shooting a vlog, who knows. You're moving through the shot and somebody is operating the gimbal. What I have found is if I hand a gimbal to somebody who's not an experienced gimbal operator, it is almost impossible for them to keep you in the frame because gimbals aren't actually all that easy to use. They are trying to smooth out that movement. So when you're trying to keep that person perfect in the frame, they're going all in, up and down and trying to move it fast enough and then the gimbal is slowly trying to sort of smooth that stuff out and I'm constantly finding if I've got somebody who hasn't had experience operating a gimbal, they're cutting off the top of my head or they're looking at my feet or they've got a bunch above my head and they're looking in the sky. And if you just hand the gimbal to somebody who doesn't know how to operate a gimbal, that is generally what you're going to get. Because this gimbal tracks you, all you have to do is hand this to somebody, do the okay symbol, and they cannot lose you. I mean, I mean, I tried to lose the camera on a number of occasions and in any reasonable, normal world situation, you cannot lose the tracking. It just sticks to you. This turns any person that's a friend or a family or somebody with absolutely no experience into a borderline experience perfect gimbal operator with no knowledge of how a gimbal works. And in the shots that I've shown up on screen now showing me try to lose the gimbal and running around, I just gave these to my 16-year-old daughter. I make her do these gimbal tests all the time. She hates doing the gimbal tests because she finds the gimbal so hard to operate and she's constantly trying to keep me in the frame while at the same time 
trying to do the ninja walk and keep everything smooth. With this gimbal, she said this was the easiest to use gimbal that she's ever had her hands on. And all she had to do was worrying about walking smoothly to give the gimbal the best chance of creating smooth footage. And other than that, the gimbal did the rest of the work while tracking me. And that is an incredibly powerful feature that it just didn't quite occur to me would be quite that powerful until I used it in real world use. Now, the only quirk that you should know about when using the AI tracking feature is the AI tracking has its own lens. It doesn't know what lens or what field of view your camera and lens combination have on it. So you do need to make sure that those two are working together and you are getting the right framing. I was, most of these shots I shot at 26 millimeter full frame, 18 millimeter on this crop sensor camera and the framing was perfect. It never cut off my head. It never left too much space above. I found that was absolutely perfect. And when I did test it, zoomed in a little bit more, it was also perfect. But because the gimbal doesn't actually know what the camera is seeing, it is something you need to watch out for and just be aware of. And the only other thing to be aware of is when using this gimbal as a standard gimbal, if you have a camera that has no digital IS, no lens IS, and no IBIS in the camera, I found it wasn't quite as smooth as my Zhiyun M3S. It was good, it was acceptable, I didn't think it was bad, but it wasn't quite as smooth as the M3S. Now, if you have lens IS, digital IS, or in-body image stabilization, it evens it out, and I would say that the image would be indistinguishable from the M3S because it just takes out that tiny bit of micro jitters. But if you don't have any of those, the M3S is going to be slightly smoother. And ultimately, I have to ask, who is this gimbal for? And before I was sent out this gimbal, I kind of thought of it as a content creator's gimbal, adding that extra dynamic movement to your shot where it would just track you in a static scene and you don't have a cameraman to add that extra movement. But after seeing it in real world use, with the normal tracking feature and using it like a normal gimbal, it is so much easier to operate, particularly for somebody who's got no gimbal operation experience. So I think this gimbal is a perfect first gimbal. I think it's a perfect gimbal for anybody who's gonna hand a gimbal over to somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience in operating a gimbal. And I think it's a great content creator's gimbal, adding that extra dynamic movement to any standard shot. In addition to that, you don't have to use the AI tracking feature if you don't want. And the price of the gimbal is comparable to similar gimbals of similar size. And in the description down below, you'll find some links for pricing and availability on the gimbal. So if you're interested in checking this out, just check the description down below.